Hello everyone. Uh, obviously my name is not Barbara Binova. Uh, I'm a last minute jump in because there was an accident. There is an argument between Bara and the staircase here at the conference and she couldn't make it today. Uh, so my name is David Hallis and I will be talking about trust management in digital ecosystems. Hi. Please try to sit in the first rows because in the back you cannot hear anything. Ciao. Stay in the front so you can hear, unlike yesterday. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm gonna stay seated because first of all, I'm tired. Second, I have some notes from my supervisor who actually prepared this talk and I'm just the last minute replacement. So uh, at the beginning, <laughs> At the beginning, I would like to talk about uh, our university, which is not this one, but the other one. Uh, it was established in 1919. Uh, it's the second largest in Czech Republic after Charles University in Prague. It has over 30,000 students. Our youngest faculty is the Faculty of Informatics, uh, which, which has over 2,000 students. Uh, Bara is the Vice Dean of Industrial Partnerships, so I guess that's the reason why she had the slides there. So uh, as digitalization is advancing and getting more and more normal in our lives, there are new challenges that we have to tackle. And also there is the dual use dilemma that technology can be also used for good or bad. And uh, if we want to embrace the good, we actually have to use it. Banning it is a, is a bad idea. It's the same as with fire. You can use it for good and also for bad. Uh, and if we talk about digitalization, there are challenges regarding hyperconnection. So everything will be, every device will be talking to every device. Uh, humans will have more interactions with, uh, with machines, uh, which brings us to the topic of dynamic autonomous and not just autonomous but dynamic cyber physical ecosystems where uncertainty and unpredictable situations can happen on a larger scale than before uh, and obviously we have to secure and future proof these technologies so we can catch issues that can happen that we don't even know about right now so uh, our Research specifically is around critical infrastructure, uh, which makes it critical because it's usually human lives are at stake or our, the way of our life is at stake. So we talk about smart grids, autonomous vehicles, smart cities. Uh, it's, it's basically everything that's around us that can harm us if it's used in a bad way. I mean, that's our view. There are def different definitions of, of what a critical infrastructure is. Uh, so we believe that trust might be the way out of this, the way how systems trust or not trust each other, or even humans or system trusting humans, human trusting systems. So uh, our first view on this is the trust management in an internet of vehicles or a network of vehicles or vehicle area networks. Uh, we can talk about collision avoidance. So if uh, two vehicles meet, then may, the, may vehicle A can trust vehicle B if they behave to avoid each other from colliding. Uh, then there is uh, vehicle platooning. When you have, as you see on the picture, multiple vehicles, we can move them into one lane and the aerodynamic resistance uh, gets lower for except for the first vehicle, so they can save fuel, for example. Can we trust, can the uh, randomly joining vehicle trust the other members of the platoon, or can the platoon trust the vehicle that's trying to join the network? Then there is my research, kinda, the runtime update, or running smart agents in the vehicle and trying to assess some kind of trust 
against that software that's being run. And of course, as I said, it's the human to uh, autonomous vehicle trust. Let's say there is a human that's uh, driving a vehicle that starts becoming autonomous slowly. I'm not talking about like hours, but like in weeks or months. So a human starts driving the car, but the car is slowly taking over as the human allows it. So uh, we can have situations like this, where we have uh, traffic lights still, which wouldn't be needed in a fully autonomous system because uh, only for only for only for pedestrians. So uh, if we look at how trust and trustworthiness was handled by the industry before, uh, increasing the security or reliability or availability of of these services, these technologies doesn't really. In, uh, doesn't really improve the trust itself in the system. It's, uh, it's not a conventional problem in computer science because trust, as, as we interpret it, is a, is a human or social concept, a belief that uh, the other system will not do harm to you by exposing vulnerabilities to it. And uh, even though the system might say that, hey, I'm trustworthy, it still can, and it's certified, and everything's fine by some checks in the past. It can uh, have, it can behave bad in the future, and we can even intentionally design uh, devices that would uh, have one sole purpose of do harm and do damage at a certain point in a in an ecosystem. Let's imagine a vehicle that behaves well for 14 days, and on the 15th day, it will just do something that would collapse the whole city and. Uh, kill a lot of people. So that's what I was talking about, the agents, agents with well, malicious intentions. Uh, banning this, uh, which sometimes comes up in legislation, isn't really a solution uh, because somebody else will anyway implement it. That's, that's one of the reasons. So we need to be proactive and come up with technologies that will solve these problems. Again, so understanding trust, we, we started doing some surveys about in other fields of science than computer science about what trust is, and we found these nice des uh, definitions. So basically, trust is a relationship between a truster and a trustee. I mean, if you want to read these, I can like, give you some time. But uh, what we got into is the trust in automation definition that suits mostly our needs which is basically a belief, a relationship between the truster and the trustee in, in, uh, the, in the context of uncertainty and vulnerability uh, to expose some kind, of, uh, some kind of side of the truster that the trustee could exploit, but in a safe environment it shouldn't happen. So this kind of trust is subjective, so if A is trusting B, it's not necessarily true that B will trust A which is also asymmetry, uh, and transitive. So if uh, a, agent A is trusting B, then it, and B is trusting C, then uh, A might trust C as well, but not always. And we, we can go into like reputation and how like social structures, let's say humans gossip about each other or have reputation about each other. So I, let's say uh, one person is very famous and they talk about him. Uh, and you hear good things about that or him or her, uh, you uh, hear good things about that person, then, then you might trust that person implicitly. So uh, we can evaluate trust in various uh, scopes. So there is a local in a situation locally, like two vehicles meet, then they can assess trust. Uh, then, based on that historical, based on that uh, relationship in the future, they can build up some kind of reputation that can be consumed by other consumers of this trust uh, framework. And of course, it can be context specific that you can trust a vehicle in a collision avoidance scenario, but for example, you cannot trust it in a vehicle platooning scenario, for example, because of a faulty component or a wrong implementation. So. Uh, we are looking into some kind of dynamic evaluation where, where we uh, deal with these things. So we came up with this 
nice picture of how is trust. Uh, guys, if you go to the back, you will not hear much. So uh, basically, we have direct and indirect trust. Direct is when you interact with some, uh, some other entity directly. Indirect is, is if, you, if you hear some kind, like, again, gossip, if we talk about humans. Then there is some kind of context information about the, the specific situation. And based on that, we can aggregate these results and make a decision about trust, which in our case, as I stated yesterday, if you have been on my talk, uh, should be probably non-binary, some kind of complex structure. We don't really know yet what, but so far we work with percentages in some kind of proof of concept uh, case studies. But it will probably like a vector of different percentages. So uh, if we evaluate trust directly, we don't talk about reputation, but just trust only, uh, then there are there is a quality of service metrics when we talk about reliability, availability, or accuracy. And there is the social metrics when we talk about these human aspects of uh, friendship, honesty, benevolence, altruism, on, on, or unselfishness. And we need some kind of uh, ways to measure these. So two metrics we already know how to measure. Uh, there is openness or transparency. And our view on this that we could use digital twins. Is anybody familiar with digital twins here? Okay, the ones who were on my talk yesterday. So a digital twin is a model of a cyber physical system, but only existing in the cyber world. So you can use it to simulate what this actual system would do in the future if you put it into some certain context. And if the cyber physical systems shares with you this model, it means some kind of transparency like, hey, I'm willing to give you my model. I'm open about it. You can use it to determine my future moves. So this is our way of defining openness in certain cyber physical situations. The other one is honesty, is how good this model is, how honest this model is. Uh, Basically, if you run this model, it behaves in a certain way, but the vehicle doesn't behave in the same way, then we can assess that, assume that the, mod, the, the vehicle wasn't really honest about this, this digital twin. Uh, again, we have these challenges that we are trying to solve. Uh, so uh, there is the thing to think update trust. So the vehicle is uh, trying to download some kind of upgrade, a black box, and can we trust it? Can we run it? Can we expose it to critical functions of the vehicle, or will it kill us? Then there is thing to think trust, when you have two entities trying to assess each other's trustworthiness, how much they can interact, how much of their safety features can they turn off to be more efficient. Usually if we talk about s safety features limiting vehicles, let's say slowing them down. If you trust another vehicle, you, uh, you will, will probably pass each other with a higher speed because you trust it and you don't feel that much vulnerable. But if, if the trust level is lower, then you probably do it in a slower way when you have more time to do sudden reactions if there is something bad happens. Then there is my research about adaptive safety, that how much should we impose these safety features directly based on uh, based on the level of trust or the trust score and what happens if I do a false positive and false negative uh, assumption which one of the solution one of the partial solutions is that as I said the non-binary the percentage where you have much much lower chance of false positives and false negatives because you don't just have the two extremes but we'll probably take it more to some kind of vector which is still in progress and the last one is governance that who should be responsible for keeping up such ecosystems? Who should be managing the trust from a centralized way? Who should be responsible for certain things? And of course, we also look into ethical, the ethical side. So regarding things to think update trust, uh, one of the scenarios is what I was talking about, is a digital twin being ran 
uh, let's say a software module that ensures in a smart city speed limits or certain traffic rules how we how we ensure that this third party software will not break our vehicle and also do its purpose limiting you in school zones let's say we treat it as a black box we uh, simulate its uh, digital twin and do predictive simulations and based on those predictive simulations we can do the live compliance checking assess its uh, how much we can trust it and based on that expose it to certain uh, features or not or if it's really bad then we can trigger some kind of safety system that disables it and doesn't allow it to run the agent in the vehicle at all this is the architecture i was talking about uh, yesterday so i'm not going to go into the details about it but this sh is supposed to uh, somehow enforce a uh, software module to run in a secure way on, on uh, autonomous vehicles. And the next one is collision avoidance. We have some experiments with drones that assess uh, trustworthiness of, of drones based on uh, previous behavior and also pull in reputation uh, into the picture and try to avoid collision in midair. Then there is adaptive safety, my research, where uh, we are trying to adapt safety features based on the level of trust and uh, safeguarding how, how uh, vehicles will, will behave in an uncertain and unpredictable world. Not just vehicles, but we are trying to demo it on autonomous vehicles, most of the things. Again, this architecture that I'm not gonna go into details with. Uh, we also designed some kind of safety, adaptive safety framework where you have a model that calculates you a trust score or value. We propagate it to the outside world. There is a safety module that based on a decision tree uh, turns on some kind of safety uh, features or uh, f exposes some features based on how the trust is changing over time. And there is governance at the end where we are looking into how to actually calculate the trust, how to, and how to represent it, how to punish or reward systems that are breaking or increasing their trust, what kind of attacks are there. Uh, and also we are looking into evidence collection, some kind of forensic readiness that we are, we can give it to legal institutions later uh, if there is some kind of misbehavior, because that might happen. There's also pre and post incident. Uh, then there are, there are problems that we haven't solved yet, like what kind of score, trust score, should we assess to newly joining, let's say, vehicles or entities to our system? Then we will probably need some kind of erosion or inflation on the trust score, because you might have been trustworthy yesterday, but it's, it's not necessary that you will be trust, trusted today. And uh, there are some kind of attacks like black swan blindness and other sources that we are looking into it also. So the challenges are the scope is situational. So in one, as I said earlier, in one scenario, you can trust it, uh, a vehicle for, let's say, lane keeping, but in another one for speed control, you cannot. That there is sub trust is subjective. Uh, again, the default trust score, as I talked about, and erosion. We also need to figure out how to detect malicious intentions uh, that are hidden. So let's say 14 days, system is doing well, increases its trust score. Then on the 15th day, it just goes on a rampage and starts killing people. Uh, how to ensure safety uh, against untrusted agents, like uh, cyber physical system can limit uh, the cyber part, like vehicles, you can disconnect them from the network, but it will be still in your smart city, it can, it, it can do still damage. So we probably need some kind of means to enforce our rules, like police will be not jobless at that point. Uh, and uh, there is also still a high degree of dynamism and uncertainty 
we will never know in uh, in the future how dyna how uh, will be the convergence of a network of let's say autonomous vehicles or any kind of smart systems because they will change over time and you will have millions uh, of unpredictable combinations so regarding attacks uh, one of my colleagues is looking into uh, what kind of attacks can happen. The important part is their individual and uh, collusion attacks, and usually they can end up either, uh, either in unreliable decision making, so we have some wrong uh, trust uh, evaluation, and based on that we do something that we shouldn't do. And the other one is uh, false trust recommendation when we, again, we have too high or too uh, low rating and recommend to another system that can do bad things. Some of these attacks are like self-promoting uh, when the system is trying to say good stuff about itself. Then there is uh, whitewashing when probably you've done it in your childhood that you created an email address, you did something on the internet, you got banned and then you create another email address and tried it again. <laughs> uh, there is a discriminatory attack when uh, it tries to attack other actors of the system and uh, tries to pull down their trust score. And there are other, other things like on-off attacks when it's sometimes good, sometimes bad. We need some kind of system that can handle these kind of situations. Uh, then there is bad mouthing when I, I can give, bring up like uh, from human social con uh, situations in, in primary school when, when five kids are starting to pick on one kid and start saying bad things about that kid. This can happen with autonomous vehicles. Or the other thing, the ballot stuff thing, that uh, five kids will agree that one of them will have a high, or five vehicles will ha agree that one of them will have a high trust score by trying to uh, prove that it's doing good and good and good and at some point on the 15th day it will start going on a rampage. So this is the things we are working on, uh, four different aspects of, of this thing. Mine is more the uh, adaptive safety and the architecture around software modules. So that's the thing I can take questions to. The rest of them I can try. Thank you. Any questions? Yes? I cannot hear you. Please come closer or shout. I will shout instead. Do you need a one word answer? Yeah, exactly. Because I'm wondering, like, if you train it on something, you know, before you deploy this thing, you let it frozen, or if you have it trained continually on new data, you know, because these things, like, they can change over time, you know. So I'm not worried about that. That's the first, first part of my question. The second question is um, how exactly is that decision to be designed? Yeah, so I have to repeat the question. So the first question was if this decision tree is static or dynamic, and the second one is how it is designed. Uh, it will be probably dynamic. Not sure how much dynamic I cannot answer you it right now, but in uncertain situations you cannot have a static one. Uh, it might happen that uh, vehicles will exchange their decision trees at some point. Uh, we are also looking into that, but we are not really deep in it. And uh, how it will be designed, that's also an open question. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Please? OK. Do we have any questions on Matrix? Do we have the session chair? If we have no session chair, then I guess this was all. Thank you, everybody, for coming.